excerpts from Speculation as a Fine Art and Thoughts on Life by Dixon G. Watts. There is no royal road to success in speculation. We do not undertake, and it would be worse than folly to undertake, to show how money can be made. Those who make for themselves or others an infallible plan delude themselves and others. Our effort will be to set for the great underlying principles of the art, the application of which must depend on circumstances, the time, and the man. Let us first consider the quality, qualities essential to the equipment of the speculator. We name them self-reliance, judgment, courage, prudence, pliability. 1. Self-reliance. A man must think of himself, must follow his own convictions. George MacDonald says, a man cannot have another man's ideas any more than he can another man's soul or another man's body. Self-trust is the foundation of successful effort. 2. Judgment, that equipoise, that nice adjustment of the faculties one to the other, which is called good judgment, is an essential to the speculator. 3. Courage, that is confidence to act on the decisions of the mind. In speculation, there is value in Mirabeau's dictum. Quote, be bold, still be bold, always be bold. 4. Prudence The power of measuring the danger, together with a certain alertness and watchfulness, is very important. There should be a balance of these two, prudence and courage. Prudence in contemplation, courage in execution. Lord Bacon says, quote, In meditation all dangers should be seen, in execution one, unless very formidable. Unquote. Connected with these qualities, properly an outgrowth of them, is a third, promptness. The mind convinced the act should follow. In the words of Macbeth, quote, henceforth the, fir the very firstlings of my heart shall be the firstlings of my hand, unquote. Think, act promptly. Five, pliability. The ability to change an opinion, the power of revision. He who observes, says Emerson, and observes again, is always formidable. The qualifications named are necessary to the makeup of a speculator, but they must be in well-balanced com combination. A deficiency or an overplus of one quality will destroy the effectiveness of all. The possession of such faculties in a proper adjustment is, of course, uncommon. In speculation, as in life, few succeed, many fail. Each department of life has its language, expressive, if not elegant, and in dealing with the subject, we must preforce adopt the language of the street. The laws given will be found to apply to speculation of any kind. They are universal laws, but for the sake of clearness, we assume that the case of speculation, as conducted in one of our exchanges, where they can be best demonstrated. Laws Absolute 1. Never overtrade. To take an interest larger than the capital justifies is to invite disaster. With such an interest, a fluctuation in the market unnerves the operator and his judgment becomes worthless. 2. Never double up. That is, never completely and at once reverse a position. Being long, for instance, do not sell out and go as much short. 
This may occasionally succeed, but is very hazardous. For should the market begin again to advance, the mind reverts to its original opinion and the speculator covers up and goes long again. Should this last change be wrong, complete demoralization ensues. The change in the original position should have been made moderately, cautiously, thus keeping the judgment clear and preserving the balance of the mind. 3. Run quickly, or not at all. That is to say, act promptly at the first approach of danger, but failing to do this until others see the danger, hold on, or close out part of the interest. 4. Another rule is when doubtful, reduce the amount of the interest, for either the mind is not satisfied with the position taken, or the interest is too large for safety. One man told another that he could not sleep on account of his position in the market. His friend judiciously and laconically replied, sell down to a sleeping point. Unquote. Rules conditional. These rules are subject to modification according to the circumstances, individuality, and temperament of the operator. 1. It is better to average up than to average down. This opinion is contrary to the one commonly held and acted upon, it being the practice to buy and on a decline to buy more. This reduces the average. Probably four times out of five, this met method will result in striking a reaction in the market that will prevent loss, but the fifth time, meeting with a permanently declining market, the operator loses his head and closes out, making a heavy loss, a loss so great as to bring complete demoralization, often ruin. But buying it first moderately, and as the market advances, adding slowly and cautiously to the line. This is a way of speculating that requires great care and watchfulness. For the market will often, probably four out of five times, react to the point of the average. Here lies the danger. Failure to close out at the point of average destroys the safety of the whole operation. Occasionally, a permanently advancing market is met with and a big profit secured. In such an operation, the original risk is small, the danger at no time great, and when successful, the profit is large. The method <clears throat> should always be employed when an important advance or decline is expected, and with a moderate capital can be undertaken with comparative safety. Two. To buy down requires a long purse and a strong nerve, and ruin often overtakes those who have both nerve and money. The longer the nerve, the more profitability of staying too long. There is, however, a class of successful operators who buy down and hold on. They deal in relatively small amounts, entering the market prudently with the de determination of holding on for a long period. They are good, they are not disturbed by its fluctuations. They are men of good judgment who buy in times of depression to hold for a, a general revival of business and investing rather than a speculating class. Three, in all ordinary circumstances, our advice would be to buy at once an amount that is within the proper limits of capital, etc. Quote, selling out, unquote, at a loss or profit, according to judgment. The rule is to stop losses and let profits run. If small profits are taken, then small losses must be taken. Not to have the courage to accept a loss and to be too eager to take a profit is fatal. It is the ruin of many. Public for Public opinion is not to be ignored. A strong speculative current 
is for the time being overwhelming and should be closely watched. The rule is to act cautiously with public opinion against it, boldly. To go with the market, even when the basis is a good one, is dangerous. It may at any time turn and rend on you. Every speculator knows the danger of too much parentheses, company. It is equally necessary to exercise common caution in going against the market. This caution should be continued to the point of wavering, of loss, of confidence. When the market should be boldly encountered to the full extent of strength, nerve, and capital, the market has a pulse on which the hand of the operator should be placed as that of the physician on the wrist of the patient. This pulse beat must be the guide when and how to act. 5. Quiet, weak markets are good markets to sell. They ordinarily develop into de declining markets. But when a market has gone through the stages of quiet and weak to active and declining, then on to semi-panic or panic, it should be bought freely. When vice versa, a quiet and firm market develops into activity and strength, then into excitement, it should be sold with great confidence. 6. Informing an opinion of the market, the element of chance ought not be omitted. There is a doctrine of chances. Napoleon in his campaigns allowed a, a margin for chance for the accidents that come in to destroy or modify the best calculation. Calculation must measure it at the incalcul incalculable. In the reproof of chance lies the true proof of men. It is better to act on general than special information. It is not so misleading. The state of the country, the condition of the crops, manufacturers, etc. Statistics are valuable, but they must be kept subordinate to a comprehensive view of the whole situation. Those who confine themselves too closely to st statistics are poor guides. There is nothing, said Canning, so fallacious as facts except figures. When in doubt, do nothing. Don't enter the market on half convictions. Wait till the convictions are full, fully matured. We have written too little purpose unless we have left the impression that the fundamental principle that lies at the base of all speculation is this. AXO has to keep the mind clear, its judgment trustworthy. A reserve force should therefore be maintained and kept for supreme movements when the full strength of the whole man should be put on the stroke delivered. It may be thought that the carrying out of these rules is difficult. As we said in the onset, the gifted man only can apply them. To the artist alone are the rules of his art valuable. That's excerpts from Speculation as a Fine Art and Thoughts on Life by Dixon G. Watts. Written in 1965. I'll come back to him later. He's got a lot more to say. All right, man. Remember, subscribe. And please leave comments if you enjoyed this video. Please let me know and I'll make more of them. Anyway, talk to you soon. Peace out.